Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise today in the House to discuss this very important bill, Bill S-219. It was tabled in the Senate and would create a national day of commemoration of the exodus of Vietnamese refugees and their acceptance in Canada. We often forget what it really represents being here, a democratic society where citizens can choose their members of parliament and where elected officials and citizens can exercise the freedom of speech safely. The majority of the population of the planet cannot exercise this fundamental right. If I rise today in the House of Commons because my parents fled Vietnam, sought refuge in Canada, started a family and lived in peace, working to meet our needs. I and Min Thuy Quash was born and raised here in Canada thanks to the courage of my parents and because of the welcome we got from this country. Sorry, I get emotional saying this. I'd like to take a few moments to tell you how my parents fled Vietnam and came to Canada. In 1979, after the Vietnam War, my parents decided to flee their country because of the horrid living conditions imposed by the new political regime and in the hope of finding a better quality of life. They could no longer stand the constraints, the violence and the injustice after the war. So they seized the first opportunity to flee in the middle of the night with my two brothers who were one and three years of age at the time. They paid traffickers the last of their money to take a boat toward anywhere indicated and wondered whether the captain would bring them somewhere safe. They ended up in a refugee camp in Indonesia before the Red Cross and got them. They came to Canada. They had no papers, no ID, no money whatsoever, no assets. They only had their lives and those of my brothers. Canada gave them papers and accepted them as refugees very generously. Bravo, yes indeed. So when they got here, they had to learn everything, surviving winter, speaking French, driving, finding a job cooking the food they could find here, living in their new country. And that's thanks to people, sons, Captain Pierre Pellerin, Ginette Malenfant, Nicole Le Duc, Estelle, who's now died, who welcomed my parents, as well as other uh, people, many Canadians who opened their doors to welcome my family and thousands of Vietnamese as if they were their own family. From then on, many Vietnamese were able to try to settle in Canada and contribute to Canadian life and thousands of thanks from all Vietnamese. Like more than 1.5 thousand people, or 1.5 million people rather, my parents were refugees by sea. Canada took 137,000 Vietnamese refugees. There were sponsors to take over these families and help them for a year. And for every sponsored person, the Canadian government accepted another refugee. So it was a movement of solidarity that was created. If you cross Preston and Somerset streets here in Ottawa, you'll see a monument to the both people. The mayor of Ottawa at the time, Mrs. Dewar, the mother of our member for Ottawa Centre, deployed a great deal of effort to welcome thousands of Vietnamese refugees. The Chinatown here in Ottawa is essentially a Vietnamese neighborhood that serves pho soup that is very comforting on a day like today. The Vietnam War was the result of 50 years of Cold War where the world was divided in two. Because of the ideology, conflicts got into conflict, families were separated, men and women were killed. We no longer live in that bipolar world where each is trying to impose the truth. The time has come to impose genuine dialogue. I was talking about opening a dialogue earlier because we need this. The Vietnamese community here in Canada is divided. It's divided everywhere in the world because there are economic and political, religious uh, divergences and 
that is why we need a round table where everyone can have the right to express their views. That's how we can have some progress and make sure things change. I'm all, I also think that S219 is the perfect opportunity to just have that dialogue because it gives the positive spin on these commemorations because they emphasize Canada's welcoming of refugees. Out of respect for our refugees and out of respect for Canadians who opened their doors to these boat people as of 1975, I think that it would be a good idea to allow everyone to conduct uh, an open and uh, an open study in the parliamentary committee. It is up to us, uh, the children of the uh, boat people, refugees, immigrants and other Canadians and uh, who want to have this dialogue to allow us to have this discussion on the appropriate commemorations. I had the opportunity to go to Vietnam and to visit my family, to see the family of my ancestors. It's such a beautiful country where people are exceptionally welcoming. I still have many people who live there and they are members of my family and they are, I think those people should have the same opportunities as I do. They should be able to enjoy democracy, to benefit from it, and uh, from the universal, fund universal fundamental rights like I do. But that is not yet the reality in Vietnam for everyone. Vietnam has signed or is part of seven international human rights conventions. It is a member of the UN Council for Human Rights. And human rights are in the country's constitution, and yet lawyers, journalists, bloggers, and citizens can continue to be arrested, judged, and imprisoned simply because they have expressed their opinion. So I was saying that there are still people who are being imprisoned simply because, simply for expressing their opinion. Today, we cannot be afraid of telling the truth and speaking out. Every human being has the right to life, freedom, and equal opportunity. Therefore, I reach out to all Vietnamese who want to begin this uh, dialogue with me and to, to all Canadians and uh, with parliamentarians. S219 gives us this opportunity for dialogue because uh, not everything has been thought through and because I think we need to seize the opportunity to sit down around the same the table together, uh, Vietnamese from all horizons, because there is a process of dialogue and healing that must be begun so that the so that we can uh, look uh, to the future. As the member across the way said, the ambassador of Vietnam uh, was not able to be heard, but I have heard, I have heard from other Vietnamese who live in Canada and who want to participate in this debate and who are not able to as part of the debate in the Senate. So this bill must uh, follow the uh, due process as part of the legislative process in Canadian Parliament and I want it to be debated in committee and I want I would like all viewpoints to be taken into account. Unfortunately, as we said, the Senate committee did not hear from all witnesses and I think that this House where we are elected officials can do better. It uh, can hear all from all witnesses at second reading and not only it can but I think that it must to express our values of openness and democracy and uh, empathy and generosity as we have done in the past. To do so, we must allow this debate to continue in this House so that there is no doubt on this. I am asking these questions because I think the process can be improved and uh, in fact I agree with this bill but I think this debate must be continued. And on a more positive note, is since it, the uh, Asian New Year is uh, going to be held on uh, February 18th, I would uh, like to wish everyone a very happy Tet. That is what we call the Asian New Year. So to all Vietnamese across Canada and elsewhere.